everybody, it's Sari. I wanted to um, talk a little bit more about the Malia Davis case. I made a video and posted it the other day with the timeline that was reported uh, by news media. Um, but after some further investigation, there seems to be some things that are not lining up. So hopefully all of these things will come to light. But it is really questionable whether or not Brittany Bowen, um, Malia Davis's mother, had a hand in this. There are some seriously incon serious uh, inconsistencies, um, as well as uh, Quinnell X. I'm disturbed by a few things. I listened to a video with uh, Brittany Bowen, that's Malia Davis's mother. Um, this is while she was missing on a uh, newscast, and the broadcaster asked her, the interviewer asked her uh, uh, regarding a, about something regarding a CPS case where Malia's skull was fractured and she um, underwent surgery. <clears throat> Subsequently, uh, Malia was removed from her care in August of 2018. And uh, she was sent to live with, um, I think, uh, CPS. Uh, and then she was turned over to Darian Vence's mother, or, yeah, his mother. And now Darian Vence is not her biological parent. Her father's name is Carl Davis. So that's that's odd. Um, Brittany and Darian were living with Brenda, who is Brittany Bowen's mother, at the time of that accident. Um, but when she was speaking to the broadcaster, uh, Quinnell, and he asked her about uh, the skull fracture and um, different cases of abuse, she began to talk about it, and you could tell she was struggling to get the information out. She started looking off it. It was uh, just wasn't genuine, and he shushed her, which bothered me. So, um, and of course, you know, within I guess a week or two, he dropped her. As far he's not an attorney, but uh, he's a community activist. So that that worried me about him. Um, that doesn't mean that I'm right about you know anything wrong with him. It's just it's just concerning. Also, there's some real real weird things here. Um, who drove Darion to the hospital that night? That Ultima? Now, of course, we all know that whole story about uh, him being beaten up and kidnapped and all that. That's not true. But I'm concerned about his confession. Um, somebody had to drive him to the airport that night because that Nissan Ultima was seen in that parking lot. Was that her? Was she? Did she drive him? Also, how did she get back in that house when she said she had no keys? Her mother picked her up from the airport. And she dropped him, um, she may have dropped him off. She got in Saturday night, didn't report him missing until the next day, but didn't report him missing to law enforcement. She drove over to Joe Vance, Joe Jr. Vance, who is um, her, they, that's her boyfriend, Darian Vance, his brother is Joe. Joe, uh, the news media descended upon his house. He got his kid his kids and his wife, and drove, uh, drove to St. Louis, which is his hometown. Um, his father lives in St. Louis. But it's very odd that um, someone was driving that vehicle, and then they later found that vehicle abandoned. It was also picked up on surveillance uh, through, I guess it's a red light camera or whatever, um, on a road in Sugarland during that time. So... How did she get it back into that house? And then how did she also speak with him and see him? She admits that she saw and spoke with him. So I'm kind of wondering what's going on there. Also, uh, did she um, leave after Malia was already dead? There are, she's a half-sister that had some text messages sent to someone. And she talks about how... Brittany would say that Darion um, would kind of take the blame for her when things went wrong with the kids, with her mother, Brenda. Brenda would question, like, what happened here? What happened there? Why are the kids, you know, this, that, and the other? And he would take the blame for things that Brittany had already done. And the CPS cases that were on um, her older boy, the five-year-old, and Malia, who are, they both had the same father, Craig Davis, those cases were opened before Darian ever met her. Now, I'm not saying Darian is, you know, he didn't do anything. It's uh, pretty clear that that trash bag is um, Malia, sadly. Uh, at least Quinnell says that that's who was in, that that was uh, the actual footage. 
we, I don't know. I'm, I want to wait and listen to what his, um, Darion's attorney has to say. And I also um, am really, really curious about Brittany Bowen's um, activity in this. You know, it's just really weird. And did she, did she maybe murder Malia and he's covering up for her? I'm not saying that's the case. But in the past, you know, patterns of behavior, apparently, you know, she had CPS. She's trying to make it out like, you know, uh, she's this great mother. And then here he comes and he's this monster. And it, as things are unfolding here, it doesn't look like this is the case. Now, I sure hope that law enforcement follows through and justice is served for this child and that her other two children are safe. Um, but it is very odd. All these things are not adding up. And... Um, some of the things going on with her are not not adding up. So it, it is really concerning, and um, I'm waiting to hear from uh, his attorney. And, of course, we still don't know if the remains are that of uh, poor little Malia. Apparently the clothing and the hair ribbon and things like that were actually in the back, so they're pretty sure that it is her, but, of course, you have to wait for the actual um, forensic testing to come back. There are just some real weird things in this case. And, uh, you know, I just wonder if maybe she uh, may have herself murdered Malia. Like I said, I'm not saying it's what she did, but, you know, we don't know. And I it would hate to see. Of course, if he helped cover it up, then he is complicit. Whether, she, whether he did it and she helped cover it up. I mean, both people need to be held accountable if that's the case. But, um, you know, and it's possible that that is not Malia in that, uh, in that basket. Uh, we don't know that. Uh, he didn't, I haven't heard his confession. And just because it came from Quin Quinnell X, now there's some things that are making me question all of that. So, um, you know, unfortunately, it's probable that Malia is dead. Um, I'm pretty sure they've just as much confirmed that until they uh, obviously get the forensic testing back. But there's some things that just don't add up in this, that, that just do not add up in this. And uh, her behavior is really, really something. So... Um, I don't want anybody to rush to judgment and assume that, you know, he's some kind of monster. He might be. The other thing, too, is that um, there's no, uh, she's, she, this was her version to Quinell X. Apparently, Quinell X said that, Darion said that, uh, you know, she was, she was going to give him the ring back and that uh, she said that she knew he was gay. There are no texts between he and any males or any nudes or anything like that. It has been substantiated um, from his phone that it was uh, supposed, supposedly texts between he and another female. But the other thing that's interesting is she said she was giving the ring back. She was done. Um, news footage after she came back, she still had the ring on her finger. So you can see that um, if you want to go online and take a look at all of her uh, interviews. Afterwards, she is clearly wearing that ring. So she didn't give him that ring back. And I don't know... Um, I'm just not comfortable with the the uh, the reporting that Quinnell X has given. I'm not saying he's wrong. I'm not saying he's lying. It just makes me wonder because he his uh, behavior was a little suspicious during that um, news briefing or that news uh, cast that she did that interview. They were sitting on some stage. I'm not certain what channel it was um, or what new, what local news affiliate it was, but you can look it up. Look up Brittany Bowen interview. And, you know, there's a few of them, and you'll see that. It's very weird. So until I hear from his attorney, and then the other thing that um, happened after I made the video is uh, Darion's attorney has put a um, some sort of a no-contact um, law or rule. I'm not sure what the statute is. But in other words, Quinnell Ox cannot can no longer go in and speak with Darion. So um, I'm just wondering if... Uh, I'm going out on a limb here, but did he actually really speak with them? I mean, I don't know. Did Brittany tell him that's where the, the body was? At this point, I don't trust any of this. You know, I just, I trust that she's gone, unfortunately, and she didn't have to die. But uh, Brittany is not the innocent victim here. Um, and I'm not real sure about Darion's uh, involvement and, and to what, what extent. And then who drove him to the, um, who drove him to the, the hospital? And where was she all this time when she came in that night and her mother picked her up? And how did she get back in the house?
Her mother drove her over there. The car was supposedly wasn't there. She had no keys. The keys were on the ring with the car keys. But all of a sudden, she's able to get back in that house. And uh, the car is found later. And who drove him? So there are some questions here that need to be answered. And until they are, um, I'm withholding judgment. And I hope that law enforcement uses uh, good judgment in this, too, and gets to the bottom of this. But it's a very tragic story and very, very sad. So, all right, well, I just wanted to clarify some things and, and correct the mistakes that I made in, uh, in my video. All right, take care. God bless.